I 34M ghosted my fiancé 33F after she asked for a temp open relationship before our wedding and then she cheated when I said no. I have rewritten this a few times in an attempt to shorten but our history goes back since we were kids. I am looking for some advice as to what I do when I get home in two days. I am changing all names obviously. Very sorry for the length of this monster. Jan and I had been friends since we were kids, our parents were lifelong friends. We grew up together and started dating in our teens. It was like it was almost expected by our families. They had more plans for us than we did. When I was going for my masters I had to move to another city and Jen remained in our hometown working on her nursing degree. After a year LDR we decided to remain friends and not have the pressure of our relationship control us. We both remained best friends and we both dated other people. It was weird because we both always knew this was temporary and we would end up back together at some point. I graduated and stayed in the city I got my masters in and started working in my field. I waited for a transfer back to my hometown and when I got it I was so happy. Jen was in a long-term relationship and he was a nice fellow, but I always got the feeling he was weary of our friendship. I understood the vibe and stepped back out of respect although she and I would talk several times a year. My boss and mentor, I will call Paul 44M, was a great guy and we became good friends. He taught me the ropes and one day came down from the ivory tower and wanted to talk. He explained there was an open position in a foreign city for two years and it would be advertised shortly. He explained the position and even though the money wasn't huge, all expenses such as rent, hotel and expenses related to travel were covered. Basically I would be based in Tokyo and have to travel once in a while to other Asian cities for a few days here and there. I thought about it, talked to my friends and parents. Paul said it was a BTCH position but would be a great opportunity to prove myself and climb the ladder. I thought why not, I could save most of my salary and gain valuable experience. Paul said he would speak to the old man and if I wanted it he would recommend me. He explained he himself did something similar years ago and it helped his career. So off I went. The first year was horrible, getting used to the culture and social rules, not only in Japan but the other countries I would visit for work. One thing that surprised me was how available women were. Everywhere I went they loved foreigners. I got to sample the delights of the Orient. These weren't third world women. Most of them were highly educated. I had many FWBS and clearly told all of them I wasn't interested in long term or marriage as I only was staying temporarily. I ended up doing two more years. Paul would visit several times a year on vacation or to supervise some work and I will admit we had some greasy times in a few cities e. Angeles City Philippines and a few others. Contract was over and I went back home. Put a nice down payment on a house just outside the city after living in a city of 37 million I needed some space lol. I was home for a month and while visiting my parents Jen was there. She and the other guy had broken up a year ago and we started talking more seriously even though we always had contact over the years. We started dating again. I held off having s time as much as I wanted because I was afraid really of what would happen. I had developed an addiction of having various partners while in Asia and was trying to control that desire before Jen and I got serious. I mean everyone including Jen knew I dated but on social media there would be infrequent photos of me and different women. My mother called me a whoremaster a few times and well to be truthful it kind of stung. Now is when things start to fall apart. Jan and I slept together and for lack of a better word she was very surprised. She said I was different and was never like that before. She meant it like I had gained a lot of experience to put it nicely. She asked me some questions and I admit I did trickle truth her. I didn't tell her the exact number because even if it was divided by three it was scary. I had no doubt that I was and could be faithful to her. The seed I inadvertently put in her mind that night would create some serious issues later. Now of course our families were thrilled we were together, it was always supposed to be this way. We were doing great and after speaking to her parents I proposed. She moved in and everything was great. There were some what I thought were some red flags like asking if I was happy with her. Fast forward to deck 2019, wedding was planned June 2020, we all know how 2020 went don't we Christmas was great and close to New Year's we would have the first D-Day. 
I was sitting down doing some work on the PC and Jan and her cousin Tammy 32F were looking through some wedding stuff. I have also known Tammy since we were kids and we were cool. Jan asks if we can talk and Tammy walks into the living room and sits on the sofa. I went to sit at the table to talk to Jan. She starts by saying for me to not interrupt or freak out, she wants to talk about something. She then explains our difference in the bedroom and says she believes I wouldn't be satisfied with her and eventually I would cheat on her and she didn't want our future children and relationship to be ruined if I stray. So here I was thinking great I am about to get dumped. Just as I am thinking things can't get worse I hear the infomercial guy in my head but wait, there's more. Jan asks me if I was willing to open the relationship so she could gain more experience and it would help her feel less insecure. She states I should not be worried as I am the only man she ever loved and that's why none of her relationships had ever led to marriage. I did agree with her on that point as I felt the same. Now of course I think this is a joke and she is not serious at all. This really can't be happening right. Since this was a year and a half ago I will try my best to recall the main points. She says she will only be with random people and never with someone we know or work with. It won't happen with the same person twice and no emotional connection. I was like WTF. When I realized she wasn't joking I lost my breath. Didn't think it was possible for a heart to skip a beat and jump to the center of my throat. I am not an angry or violent person but now I am yelling. I am starting to understand why Tammy stuck around close by. I yelled, Tammy did you put her up to this? Tammy says she is just there to support Jen. Wow thanks so much. So then Jen says I am free to do as I wish under the same rules and I said no. I am so pissed at this point and even writing this now I am raging. I then said I don't want one night stands. I just want one person. She says who? I looked at Tammy and not in the eyes and said, I want to FCK Tammy. Now I get a rise out of Jen and Tammy wasn't expecting that and she is a bit red in the face and now uncomfortable. Jen says no, she is family and someone we both know and it is gross for me to even suggest it. I am now totally in bizarro world. Where the hell did this come from? We argued back and forth for a bit and I told her if she does this the relationship is over. I am totally against this and I love her and we can work through everything together, but not this. I stormed off, grabbed my pillow and went to the guest room. I could hear them downstairs for a bit but couldn't hear what they were saying. It would have been a hilarious joke if it didn't last for an hour of conversation. I didn't sleep all night and was a bag of SHT at work the next day. Jen started two weeks of night shift that day so at least we wouldn't be home together for that time and we could both cool down and revisit this later. Dinner would be in the fridge for me every day with an I love you note. She would text frequently but I kept my answers short. Thursday night of the next week of her night shift I go to the PC to work over some files and I notice an email notification on her account and it's a hotel reservation for a good hotel that's close to my office. I know it well as I go often with co-workers. I am thinking she is supposed to be working but maybe she wants to apologize and take me for a night out. The next morning I am waiting for her text or call to invite but only asking me how my day was. Then she says she's so happy she only has to work one more night of the night shift. Boom how does she have one more night in a hotel reservation? I was sick, stressing in my office. Started looking through some dating sites, especially profiles with no pics. I can't find anything. Paul pops in and asks me if I want to go for lunch and sees I am a mess. He asks what's up and I tell him. Paul is hard MGTAW but has always supported my relationship with Jen. He suggests we go get lunch at hotel restaurant and I scream no not that place. He didn't know that part. We actually go for lunch and I am sick to my stomach, can't eat. Don't even want to drink. He says I can't work like this and I can take as much leave as I can. Paid and unpaid if needed. I told him I can't be there at my house anymore. I can't see her and a part of me wants to believe it isn't true. I rush home and put as much of my SHT in my car as I can and go back to the office. Paul says let's go stake out the hotel and wait for her to check in. I mean I am no pie or detective, I am more like Inspector Clouseau. I was really resisting this but I really had to know. 
so we go set up in the lounge bar and I start pounding them back and waiting, still hoping this wasn't real. Around 6.30 Paul taps me on the shoulder and there she is at the front desk and not in uniform. I want to strangle her, scream, spit, cry, I don't know. We wait for 10 minutes after she gets in the elevator and Paul and I walk to the front desk. I ask the reception to put me through to Jen blank blank room and it rings. As soon as she answered I just started yelling into the receiver and she sounded confused. Jen I told you if you did this that we would be over. I am done, wedding off, relationship over, and I hung up and got my Z out of there. Now where to go? I went back to Paul's and now my phone is lighting up. The only person I called was my dad and explained in PG rated terms what happened and I need to leave town for a bit. It wasn't a discussion and I feel bad for how I spoke to my old man. Phone didn't stop for two days. Everyone under the sun called me and I didn't answer. I didn't know what to do. The only way I could explain how I felt was like walking around underwater. Paul mentioned some financial things I should deal with to protect myself. I wasn't even thinking about that. The house, wedding, loans for the car. We kept separate accounts and one for the wedding and one for house-related bills. I couldn't care less. The next day I emailed Jen and said this would be our last contact and I was leaving the city for a while and the wedding and everything else was off. I called my dad back and spoke with him at length and while he was crushed he understood I needed time and space. He said he still hopes we could work it out. Ten days later I boarded a plane and traveled to Bali. I never answered any of her or anyone's messages or emails. I don't know if she left the hotel that night or stayed. I didn't care. I eventually landed in Bali and climbed into a bottle for the next month and went offline with the exception of my dad and work. Didn't even care if I got fired. I wish I could say I enjoyed myself but was mostly just drunk. I felt a lot of rage and shame and hate about how things went down. I kept in touch with Paul about my leave and after three weeks he asked if I could run back to Tokyo to look after some things. We talked about the new global virus and I mentioned coming back to Canada to settle things there as I was hearing rumors of potential lockdowns. I got to Tokyo on March 1st and it felt good to get back to work even if it was just a little. After hearing lockdowns were coming Paul mentioned me getting back to Canada but I said May. It's only going to be 30 or 60 days. I need some time to plan my next move. I was still in Japan for another year before I got vaccinated. But by this time I didn't really want to go home. My house was rented out and I was talking to family but refused any info about Jen. On Sep 21 I received news my dad had a heart attack and was doing well but would need a triple bypass. This surgery is serious, not as serious as it was 40 years ago but I still want to see him and just in case. I know when I get home it is going to turn into a SHT show and I really don't want that, just want to see my folks and thank Paul for all he has done for me, even as selfish as I was. But I know I am going to have to see her and I have no idea how I am going to feel or think. I am so sorry for the length of this, even still I left a lot out. Redditor's Reactions Redditor 1 does she keep trying to talk to you? Her parents know what happened? Unfortunately you will have to see her and be strong. You left because she betrayed you. You are not to blame for that. I hope you update this. Redditor 2, you did great. When you see her again, tell her that you told her the truth. She made the choice to lie and go to a hotel with the intention of sleeping with Lord knows who. You only had eyes for her. She wanted to sleep around. There's nothing left to say. Stay strong you are doing the right thing.